There aren't too many things that a female can do on a basketball court that's going to excite a male because you can't dunk. So if you can't dunk, you can't windmill dunk. You can't 360. You can't between the legs. You can't do any of those dunks. So what do you have to offer? Boy, if you go watch CC, you'll see. CC is the total package of a female baller other than being able to dunk. She has all of the skills, all of the intangibles, except that she can't dunk and won't ever be able to dunk. She's six foot one and she's a white woman. The odds are all against her. They're all against her. Hey, yo, what up? It's your boy Chocolatey with the Sexy Body. Welcome to a new episode of Chocolatey Plays. We are back, and you know who we're talking about. I don't even need to tell you. You see the shirt. You see who it is. You know what we're talking about. NVPCC. Screw the rookie of the year. MVP. What we got to do to get her there? What she got to do to make it, guys? What does Kaitlyn Clark have to do in the next seven games to get the rookie of the year and the MVP of the league? What she got to do? Did you see what she did yesterday? Another one. Another one. She dropped the another one. Triple-double. 24 points, 10 assists, 10 rebounds, 7 turnovers, though, Kaitlyn. 7 damn turnovers. I can live with it, though. I can live with it when you get the victory. It was an ugly, sloppy, dirty, nasty, stanking, but it was, a, it was a win. And a win is a win, and Kaitlyn Clark has dropped her second triple-double. Guys, she was the first rookie to ever do it. And now she has two of them. Kaitlyn Clark is setting the damn bar real, real high. Real, real high for the next rookie. Boy, she's setting that shit high. If I was Kaitlyn, I would have tried to go after every single damn rookie uh, record that a point guard could get. Every one of them hoes. I would have tried to get all the assists, all the damn points. I would have I would have broke Sue Bird's record in the WNBA All-Star game. I know you didn't want to do it, Kaylee. You didn't want to embarrass her any further because you done took all her shit. She ain't got no more records to fall back on. We ain't going to know who Sue Bird is no more after this. That's the only way that you will know who Sue Bird is when they talk about her WNBA assist record in the, in the All-Star game. The only one that Kaylin didn't take. She didn't broke all the rest of them. She is on her way to breaking the single season assist record in the WNBA held by Alyssa Thomas. 316 assists. This girl has 17 games left. I think she has 286 assists right now. What the hell is going on? Why was there ever talk about a be there being a rookie of the year race with this woman playing as great as she is right now? She's playing light years ahead of all the rookies, not just that when they do all the rebounding, all of them. And if you ask me, Rakia Jackson should be second on that list. But anyway, Kaitlyn Clark is phenomenal. The way that she plays, it is beautiful. Guys, she don't look like a girl out there. You understand what I'm saying? She don't look like a girl. She don't look clumsy, right? She don't like she's thinking about her moves. She just reacts. She just reacts. And that's why it was so hard for her teammates to get on the same page with her because they think Caitlyn reacts. And if you're on the court with her, your ass better learn how to react fast to a behind-the-back pass like she's doing right now in the WNBA. Look, man, there aren't too many things that a female can do on a basketball court that's going to excite a male because you can't dunk. So if you can't dunk, you can't windmill dunk. You can't 360. You can't between the legs. You can't do any of those dunks. So what do you have to offer? Boy, if you go watch CC, you'll see. CC is the total package of a female baller other than being able to dunk. She has all of the skills, all of the intangibles, except that she can't dunk and won't ever be able to dunk. She's six foot one and she's a white woman. The odds are all against her. They're all against her. Don't, don't take that Vegas bet that she'll be able to dunk. They better drop that damn goal to eight feet tall, nine feet tall. It's the only way. Eight feet tall. Eight feet tall. She'll be able to dunk it. She'll be able to dunk it. But check it out. Kayla Clark is doing something that I had never seen before. Because for one, I, I hadn't been watching WNBA. <laughs> Just start watching it right now. I hadn't been watching it. But from this standpoint and what she has done to this team, turning it completely around, they are what are they, 18 and 16 right now? This team won 13 games last year. They won 13 games. Kaitlyn Clark is a more valuable player on her team right now than Asia is. Than Asia is. Let's start comparing them. I don't want to hear no more talk about all the other shit because that's done. This woman is light years ahead of that competition. Let's talk about her in the MVP talks and what she got to do to make it happen. What does she have to do? Do they have to close out all these games, all seven games, and win them? Do they have to beat the Aces back-to-back? -back? Right? Does she have to get another triple-double? 
Is she going to have to average 30 points from this point on out? What is she going to have to do? Because that's what we need to start talking about. Because her team right now is playing lights out. Hot. Spicy. Muy caliente. Muy caliente. And did you see Boston yesterday? I said it. I said Boston has a bad matchup when she plays against taller competitors. Before this game, Boston had seven points and seven points. She played against Cardoza, who's six foot seven, taller than her. Held her seven points. She played against these two big ass ladies out there to play for Dallas Wings. I forgot their names already. I looked them up. I promise. I looked them up. I put them in my phone. I said, you know what? I ain't got to look at it again. I remember them. And then I didn't. I didn't remember them. And as a matter of fact, the same ladies, right? They were in Dallas. Because I was in Dallas for the fever game when they played against the Wings, right? I mean, I'm there. And the women are coming out of the tunnel. I'm waiting to see CeCe come out, right? And Mitchell, because I need to holler at Mitchell, because Mitchell's doing a damn great job right now. It sucks that they you lost your, your shooting, uh, the 20 points a game streak, but it's okay. She dropped 18 still. <laughs> she is very much needed on this team to continue to keep doing what she's doing right now. But I'm waiting for them to come out, right? And one of them come out. One of the Dallas Wings ladies come out. She come out. She with uh, two people, right? She walk out, and she look up at us, right? She looks up at us, and we look down at her. Well, actually, I wasn't even looking at her. I'm still trying to look behind where she came from to see if the people coming that I want to see. And all you hear is somebody go, uh, y'all not going to say nothing to me? Y'all just going to stand there and not say nothing? And you hear this one little white girl scream out, we don't know who you are. <laughs> and everybody started laughing, right? She was embarrassed. She was embarrassed. You know what? The best thing for you to have done in that situation, and I said this on a live. If you didn't catch it on a live, you're going to catch it right here. The best thing for you to do in that situation, ladies, is when you step out there and you see a crowd of damn people and ain't none of them cheering for your ass, right? You should have the awareness, right, to be like, you know what? They have been coming to a lot of games recently looking for Caitlin Clark. And I ain't never seen this many people in my stadium before, ever. So maybe I should go out there and introduce myself. Walk your happy ass out there and go, hey, guys, my name is such and such. I just want to say thank you guys for coming out and supporting the WNBA. We understand that you guys are here for Caden, but it really means a lot to us that you keep showing up to these games. Thank you very much. The crowd would have went crazy. They would have went crazy, but y'all keep fumbling your opportunities. Y'all keep fumbling your damn opportunities. That's why nobody ain't going to know y'all ass because you keep fumbling the damn opportunity. Now let's get back on Boston's ass. Boston had a hard time going against these damn trees. She's been having a hard time. And then if it's not the trees, right, it's a skilled player. Now, Fisha Kaya lit that ass up for 31 points. Lit him up. She was not there the first time that the, uh, the, the Fever played them. And the first time the Fever played them, Boston had 14. So she produced points-wise, right? But in this games, these next games, she couldn't get in the paint to score. She couldn't get in the paint to score because these ladies are so damn tall. Cardoso and them, they six foot seven. They all they got to do is hold their hands up and they get rebounds. Boston's is six five. Now, I don't know if you uh, uh, understand this or recognize this, and the woman will tell you, but two inches means something. Two, 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 no, no, no. I said, yeah, two inches. Yeah, two inches. Yeah, it means something. It means a lot. Boston has a hard time playing against that shit. She has a very, very hard time playing against it. She can't move around in the post. And if you watch Boston play, she scores a lot of her points in the paint. A lot of them. And they kept restricting that shit. They blocking her stuff. Out rebounding her. She couldn't do anything. It's, it, she was so intimidated by them that she continued to get rack of fouls. That's why one, one game that they lost because she was oversized and racked up a bunch of fouls and she got, uh, knocked out the game. But she racked up fouls, sat on the bench, come back, still getting bodied. So she had to switch over to the secondary skill set. Pass the ball. Pass the ball, Boston. So if you see Boston's score go down to seven, her assist went up to eight, to six. She had to find a different way. So it looked like a bad slump for her. It really did because she wasn't, she wasn't scoring like she used to. She averages, she's damn near averages a double W in the WNBA. She got 12 of them shits. You see what I'm saying? On a team that's actually winning because of them. I, but I don't want to go that way. I ain't going to do that. Anyway, we're going to get back on this Boston man who played phenomenal in this game. She played phenomenal because she played against undersized opponents. May, what is it? Hambry is 6'3". After her, everybody else is 6'2", 6 6'1". 6 There's nobody else. But they got a Chinese lady over there at 6'7". She's not very skilled, and she's slow, right? It's just like playing against Brittany Griner. Brittany Griner is tall for nothing. She's slow as hell. Just get on a break. 
She'll get tired. Coach, I need to get out the game. And she'll sound just like me. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, I'm a hoot. Anyway, guys, the way that this team is playing right now, they're playing phenomenal. The things that they need to clean up because they're getting ready to go against the Minnesota Lynx on the Friday. And they can win this game. Neutralize Kalia. Not stop her because you ain't going to be able to stop her. Neutralize her. If you can keep Kalia, right, to 22, 24 points. If everybody can knock their damn shots down, Dantas, who was 0 for 5 the first time y'all played. That is unacceptable and it cannot happen again, right? You need to close out on these three-point shooters. Please. Lexi. Mitchell. They torched y'all ass. That's why the Lynx stayed, I mean, not nothing, but the Sparks stayed in the game with y'all yesterday night because they, they kept shooting threes. And y'all was terrible on the closeout. Have to work on that. Transition defense, ladies. When you get a turnover, get your ass back down the court on defense. Stop arguing with the referees, Caitlin. I'm talking to you, Caitlin. Stop arguing with them. They not going to be on your side. And we don't need you to get no more texts. Because if you get another technical foul, you're going to get suspended. And we don't need that, Caitlin. You're going after the MVP right now. You're going after the championship. Guys, I said it. And people said I was stupid. They called me crazy. I, I, I need to go find all of those uh, comments that I had where people was like, she ain't no damn MVP consideration. She ain't no clear-cut rookie of the year. What you talking about? Kaylin is this. Kaylin, that's all they said. And I kept having Kaylin back. Kaylin, Takalati got your back. And I need y'all to get me out there because I want to go to the next game. I want to go to one of those games where they play against the Aces. I'm going to make it happen. It's going to happen, guys. Listen, that is my time right now. I appreciate all y'all for stopping by. We didn't talk about what these girls got to do to win this next game against the Lynx, right? Or just to win out, period. Because I think they can go. And a best matchup, right, is the Connecticut Sun. But they're most likely going to pull the Minnesota Lynx in the first round. They can get them. And, they, and it's practice this week. It's practice this week. Boston, if you can't score on the inside, please work on the outside jumper. And when you got a skilled, right, forward that you're playing against, get some damn help. Somebody come help Boston. Or I like how Lexi slides over, right, from the, from the weak side trying to get the steal. Keep doing that, Lexi. She's been playing great. I almost forgot to say something about her. Sexy Lexi, you know what's up with them legs. Who woo them legs? This is Chocolatey sign off after Kayla Clark then did what? Another one. That's what she did. She dropped another one on them boys. Thank y'all for rocking with your boy. Listen, if you are new to the channel, you know what you got to do. Hit that subscribe button to become part of Chocolatey crew. Hit that like button. Hit that notification bell so you know when your boy drop videos and live streams. We're going live after the game tomorrow, baby. It's going to be us, baby. We're going live. <laughs> Thank y'all guys for tuning in, man. Peace. Oh, peace. I had to hold it up high. Wait a minute. Peace. <laughs> Go Fever!